Welcome everybody. My name is Krzysztof Pomorski. I, I, I'm currently assistant professor at Krakow University of Technology at Faculty of Computer Science and Telecommunications. And I'm also founder and uh, of the company Quantum Hardware Systems. So I will give a talk uh, entitled From Classical Sensing and Computation to Quantum Computation and Quantum Artificial Intelligence. So this will be going in direction of, of quantum li uh, artificial life as well. So, uh, so basically this is a very broad topic. So I will, at first I will make comparison of um, quantum mechanics and classical statistical physics. So uh, because those, there are certain analogies that, uh, does, uh, there are certain analogies that helps to understand uh, quantum mechanics from the perspective of classical statistical physics. So I will refer to my, a kind of my definition of artificial intelligence that is slightly different than those uh, presented by Professor Fabio Bonsignorio. Uh, I will give also a definition of cognitive agent and cognitive particle. And then I will move to artificial uh, neural networks and I will end up in uh, quantum artificial neural networks. And then I will show the example of quantum electronics, uh, how it can be implemented in quantum electronics. So my final postulate is that uh, simply saying, uh, there is possibility for quantum computer implementation in, in the architecture of classical quantum computation. So personally, I, I believe that this is a realistic scenario. Uh, we will see why it's that. So basically, uh, what is a computation? That's a first uh, thing. And this is something which I always argue with my boss because I, I work at Computer Science Institute and I, I, I keep publishing in physical journals. So, uh, so I, I, so I used, used to say that uh, the true uh, information processing is described by language of physics. And the so-called mathematical computation from certain perspective is not real. So it's only symbolic representation of physical process. So in mathematics, we have a, a ideal a computation done on a logical or real or complex value variables. But this, this, this mathematical system is idealized and disattached from reality, physical reality. So it only does exist in our brain. So in real computers, which are real physical systems, very well engineered, of course, computation is physical process that is about evolution of physical system from some initial conditions uh, given by initial boundary conditions into final conditions. That, that is the output of computation. And, uh, and noticeably, we need to, to be able to set and read the given physical states in a physical way. It's very important. And, and reading the physical state is about making a physical measurement. This is also very important. That is very much missing in mathematical description of computation process. So uh, the, the computation uh, process is, uh, is how to say, uh, is very, uh, measurement process is very complicated in, in general because this is about interaction of the, of, uh, apparatus with given a system that is under measurement. And in, in both in classical and in quantum picture, measurement uh, introduce perturbation to physical system. Now this is saying at least perturbation. So we, uh, the system under, after measurement uh, is, is changed. So it's never fully the same. So we need to be, able, be careful what we measure and how we measure. This will, this will be particularly important in quantum mechanics, where uh, the, the phenomena of measurement has quite a dramatic effect on a physical system. In general, we can recognize weak and strong uh, measurement. So weak measurement is sim simply weak interaction of apparatus with given a system under measurement that can be quantum computer. And strong measurement is a strong interaction, but this interaction irreversibly uh, changes physical system that is under measurement. So basically it destroys the quantum state. All right, so this is just general uh, remark because this is very deep topic, so I'm not going to go that far. 
So now uh, I would say, uh, what is the, what is artificial intelligence? So so so, so quite uh, I would say most uh, most interest uh, in most computer departments is about development of expert artificial intelligence like voice recognition. But let's say from my perspective, it's not fully artificial intelligence. Uh, so uh, I would call I would define intelligence as mathematical or physical system with tunable physical or mathematical laws that can adapt towards changing reality. So uh, an economy of existence is driving changes in artificial intelligence. Uh, so simply saying, uh, the, 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 there, there, there's reward for a given system performance. So in a sense, I call it economy of existence. Of course, this, this has evolutionary explanation. And also, uh, so in very real sense, uh, artificial intelligence system is, pro is, is system with programmable physical laws. So when we see a racket with aliens, there is from the movie Independence, a racket that slows down instead of speeding up when it approaches the Earth. That's already a sign of intelligence in a sense that, 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 that due to engine work from external observator, those laws of physics are changed. But nevertheless, they are, they are not fully changed if we take into consideration of all aspects. So, uh, so basically, uh, yes, this is uh, cognitive end and end colony I recognize as artificial intelligence system. And, and, uh, and of, of course, so one thing is artificial intelligence. So, so th there is th this feature of ad adaptation. But uh, if we, uh, then there is another more detailed category that is embodied uh, artificial intelligence. And this is due to the fact that we deal with cognitive particle, like a robotic agent, where we have coevolution of mind, motor system, and sensor system. So then I call it artificial, uh, embodied artificial intelligence. So, of course, uh, quite, uh, let's say, since, since few decades, uh, neural networks were doing very good career in, uh, in boosting the development of artificial intelligence. I would say any recurrent neural network in principle shall be able with, uh, to simulate a, a Turing machine, basically. So, so, so I would say if we are able to implement neural networks on a quantum level, like quantum neural networks, in principle, we're supposed to be able to, 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 to simulate quantum Turing machine. In a, uh, so that's, that's, that's the purpose of my talk. All right, so and then, uh, then I refer to one of uh, icons of artificial life and embodied intelligence, artificial intelligence. This is work by uh, uh, Ikegami and, and his uh, already doctor um, on uh, Breitenberg vehicles. So here we have a case when uh, we have a motor system, there are two wheels, we have the, we have the sensor system, so we see we, we can see quite clearly the, the vision in, in, in gray, vision area, which agent can, uh, can see in front of it. And, and then uh, obviously every agent has a, a kind of brain like, and this is new, a recurrent neural network. This is, this, this is shown here. And those two agents can be involved in, in detailed games. So one agent is trying to predict the movement of another agent and is trying to, to get from behind. So, so, uh, as, so this is simply uh, interaction of, of agents with physical space and, and, and then, so, so indirectly to agents are interacting with themselves via physical space. So then uh, there is emergence of very particular uh, patterns of behavior that can change under certain circumstances. And then, so the system can somehow readapt to, to different conditions. So that's what, what I mean by intelligence. Uh, one can refer to, to, to details of this work in more detail. It's, it's just a general kind of view on a kind of very narrow definition of artificial intelligence. Okay, so, so basically I have defined what, what I understand by intelligence, and then I, I would try to approach towards it from kind of a quantum perspective. 
So first, I need to distinguish uh, two pictures of reality that uh, we uh, that we have. So basically, we used to live in a classical world. Uh, our daily existence is governed by uh, a kind of classical laws of physics and by uh, by I would say by uh, classical or classical determinism. So, so one, one uh, bullet uh, is, is going on one trajectory. It's quite deterministic movement. So, so, so everything is governed by Newton laws and continuity. And on the quantum level, things becomes more complicated. So it turns out that there is no such thing as full uh, determinism there is a stochastic determinism and then uh, the, 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 there are certain energies uh, that are allowed and uh, so, so only certain levels are allowed for for being occupied so and 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 furthermore in uh, in classical physics we have a local realism this means that the correlation between two objects is decaying with distance quite quickly in general uh, so this is what is called by local realism. However, in in, in case in case of quantum mechanics, uh, there are known cases uh, uh, described by uh, spooky action of a distance, uh, described by entanglement, when we have violation of local realism. So in a sense, if we have two electrons that uh, that are entangled, one has spin. Uh, there are superpositions of spin up and spin down. Uh, if we make a measurement on one electron, it, it immediately affects the state of another electron that is on the moon, for example. So we make a measurement on the Earth, another electron is on the moon. So, 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 so this correlation can, uh, has infinite um, speed of propagation. And uh, so this is definitely a violation of local realism. Mm, that's a very uh, um, unique feature of, of, of quantum mechanics. Second feature is massive parallelism. I will, I will show it in greater details on next slides. So obviously on big scale, the quantum uh, systems has to, has, has to be uh, approximated by classical laws of physics because, because our macroscopic reality is, uh, is classical. So it's, it's more exactly it's described by uh, classical uh, statistical physics. All right, so basically what is a peculiar feature of a quantum mechanics is that the given state, if it's not observed, uh, can be in two states at, at two or more states at the same time. So we can have a, a like superposition of dead and the live cat. And if we make <coughs> I'm sorry, the measurement, strong measurement actually, <coughs> the, the statistical state of the system is destroyed. I mean, it's projected actually. So the output of measurement is the cat is alive or cat is dead. So this is this is the, this is what what is uh, that that the, the, otherwise the the quantum state evolves in a way if it's not observed. So so so, so those those two, two states are governed by certain uh, evolution dynamics, right? All right, so th so that's that's very uh, important uh, kind of uh, conclusion from quantum mechanics, and then uh, this uh, allows us to um, define uh, the new type of, of of bit. So it's like generalization of a bit. So so in in, in classical computing in digital electronics we deal with uh, zero one. So that's that's the left. The Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we are dealing with this. Uh, so, so say this is zero or one. So it's like sharp logic. Then, in case of uh, classical neural networks, we deal with fuzzy bit. So fuzzy logic in a sense that that the the, the state can be between zero and one in in a continuous way. So it, it can be it can be in a continuous way. And, and, and then we have a qubit, the quantum mechanics, where the state can be a linear combination of zero and one. So it's described by block sphere. 
So, uh, so the, the the quantum state is so this is a qubit that is highly exploited in in quantum mechanics. So basically, uh, we have the normalization of of a physical state as it's as it's shown here, and then there is evolution of this of this. So the state quantum state is a vector. It can be of finite or infi infinite size. It depends on on the situation. So in case of spin, there is only spin up and spin down. So alpha and beta are complex values. So its modulus is, is square of modulus has to be uh, sum up to one, and then there is evolution uh, equation with time. So we have a Hamiltonian acting on a on a given qubit. It's it's it's, it's so it's like d over dt. So change of 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 of, of state, and this is multiplied by imaginary unit times Planck constant. So in more detailed analysis, this is a diffusion equation. With imaginary time, actually, that's, that's 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 how it is. All right, let me move on. So basically, having such uh, defined uh, uh, atom of uh, let's say operation, we we have uh, we we can define universal gates. So you can see, uh, so all so we can perform operations on uh, on one qubit or on agglomerates of qubits. All these operations will be represented by action of matrices. So you have Pauli matrices X, Z, Y. So this is like matrix multiplication. So, so in a sense, so in a sense, the inversion operation is much richer than in case of classical uh, classical logic. Also, you can you can you can define, for example, a conditional not gate. So if, if if controlling bit is uh, zero, there is no negation, and if it's one, it, there is negation. However, it it can be, the controlling uh, qubit can also be in a superposition of two states. So so, so this reality is, is 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 richer. You can also you you can also define many other operations. You can define the set of quantum universal gates. I'm not going to to give detailed description since since that the, the, there is very vast literature on that, so you you can refer by yourself. I will move on. Uh, all right. So uh, so then uh, then there is I want to mention about this entangled uh, feature. So this is like spooky action of a distance. So like two electrons or two photons that are entangled, uh, and if they are separated. Uh, then if you make a measurement on one of them, and if it's one, then another must be uh, two and reversely, as, as you can see. So that, 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 that's a, this feature is, it, it, it is definitely not, not present in classical physics. Nevertheless, in, epidemiolog in, in epidemic model, in one of my papers, I also, I also uh, if you model epidemic of COVID, uh, you can, somehow find such states in, in classical statistical physics. This is, you need to refer to, to my paper on archive on, 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 on that. Uh, yeah, so, so, so nevertheless, this is quite a unique feature of, of a quantum mechanics. All right, so, and then let me move to more particular example. There's a particle in a box. So if you have a classical description, the probability of finding the particle so it can it, it, it can collide with wall and go back and forth. It's, it's pretty much uniform. And in quantum mechanics, if you solve Schrodinger equation uh, that I just uh, described here, this is this is short way of, of, of stating this equation, then uh, you see that probability distribution is not uniform. Nevertheless, on average, both uh, probability distributions are pretty much the same. They have to be the same due to correspondence principle. So quantum mechanics, introduce extra corrections uh, as in comparison with predictions given by uh, statistical or classical physics. All right. Okay, I will not, uh, I will not go into details how things are done, but uh, classical, uh, classical physics is governed by Hamiltonian equations. So Ham Hamiltonian is object that is sum of kinetic and potential energy, essentially. So you have equation of motion for a uh, generalized position and momentum, as you can see here. And uh, that there, are, there are Poisson brackets that can be uh, moved to uh, Heisenberg uh, to um, comm commutators later. But uh, so there's a certain procedure of quantization of given theory from, class from classical to quantum picture. 
I'm not going to describe it in detail. Nevertheless, I will mention that there is uncertainty principle. So in case of, for example, position and momentum of a particle, uh, the more you know the, 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 the position, the less you know momentum. And this answer, this is very, uh, it's very uh, remarkable to recognize that the similar uncertainty relation occurs in, in classical statistical um, physics. So there, there is a, a, a energy and temperature, for example, cannot be de determined with arbitrary accuracy. I will not concentrate on this issue in, in greater details since it's a very vast subject. All right, so, so basically uh, in quantum mechanics, we, uh, you, you have a kind of evolution uh, that is, uh, so, so, so that there's a lot of analogies, but uh, probably I will not have much time to expose those, those analogies. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, from mathematical perspective, both systems are, are, are quite um, the same. So for example, the wave function in quantum mechanics is e to the power of action. There is imaginary unit over a Planck constant. And here we have uh, in, in, in classical, classical statistical mechanics, we have e to the power of entropy. That's uh, so, 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 so there are certain similarities. All right, so let me move on. So now, uh, now I will I will come to into a description of uh, uh, into comparison of a neural network, classical neural network versus uh, uh, quantum mechanics. So actually, um, the prediction of neural networks, uh, classical neural networks, are not fully deterministic from the point that, uh, there there is certain level of noise and so on. So we we can essentially compare a neuron to a wave function. And then uh, we can then we can have uh, interconnections between neurons, and th this is so. This is expressed by proper weights, and there are su such interconnections. Uh, those interconnections can be equivalent in a certain way to superposition in a quantum mechanics. Uh, then uh, also we have a learning rule, and the, 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 in, in in classical neural network, and there is entanglement. Uh, correspondence uh, for a quantum mechanical system. So, 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 so certainly, uh, certainly, uh, also there is certain evolution to attractor in, in, in cert uh, under certain conditions of, of neural network operation. And th then you can also describe it as a, a kind of measurement like procedure when, when, when the measurement is forcing the quantum state to, to, to preoccupy only very small phase space, something like that. All right, so, so let me move on. Mm. So, so basically, uh, if, if you have those two pictures to give you a kind of brief, oh, uh, the summary of a quantum mechanics versus classical one. So you can, you can imagine yourself the, the, how the atom looks like. So, 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 so in, in classical mechanics, there's, it's like st there are stiff orbits and in quantum mechanical quantum mechanics, there are waves. So, 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 so there is this this particle wave duality that, that that is taking place. All right. So, so let me move more towards uh, quantum circuits. So, this is just example of, of of a given quantum circuit. So, on the one side, you have a physical state that is set up, and then. On the other side, there is an output, and you can only determine output by, by conducting the measurement. And, and, and in the middle, you have a set of uh, quantum logical gates. So the whole system can also be recognized as, 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 as a quantum neural network uh, as well. Nevertheless, you would probably requ request more nonlinearities to take place, and this will be shown later. Okay, so what are the examples of uh, uh, so let me move now to the case of hardware description. So, so basically, uh, basically, for last three years, I was uh, I modeling the single electron devices in uh, in in, uh, in in semiconductor nanostructures. Uh, this is because there is a tremendous um, development of CMOS technology. So, if you buy a new laptop, basically you have a CMOS transistors of of 10 nanometers of channel length. And what is even more interesting, 
when you cool down those transistors, uh, they maintain its functionality or similar IV characteristics even at, at, at temperatures much below one Kelvin. So, so, so since you have a, a, let's say, channel length of 10 nanometers, this, this is less than 100 atoms, you can consider uh, the, uh, the implementation of, 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 of a qubit with such small system. And those, those kind of CMOS technology is very reproducible. So, so, so it's also a very attractive feature. So let, let us look how things can be described. So basically, if you have a field effect transistor, you, ha you have a, a source and drain. So this is like quantum dot A and B. And in, the, in, in between, there is a gate. So, so, so there is a semiconductor and, the, and then there is a gate that is separated uh, from so, so semiconductor by insulator. And then this gate, voltage applied to this gate can control connectivity between quantum dot A and B. So, so this is a very good feature. So this means that in general, you can implement a graph of, of coupled quantum dots and, and the connectivity between quantum dots or nodes of the graph can be controlled electrostatically. So uh, electrostatic control has very tremendous advantage since the, the cables, nanowires can have very small uh, size. This is not the case of, of current IBM quantum experience uh, hardware uh, where the, the controlling factor is due to magnetic field. And this magnetic field uh, uh, requires so, small solenoids and those solenoids takes a lot of space. So, so the semiconductor technology is much more compact. So furthermore, at such, you have very small, uh, so most recent models of transistors has only three nanometers of, of a channel length, even less. So, 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 so there is a tremendous advantage of, of small, small dimensions uh, that, 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 is, uh, that is in such type of systems. So usually if you inject one electron to one of the quantum dot, it can oscillate back and forth if it preoccupies at least two eigenenergy levels at the same time. And so you can see characteristic uh, frequency of occupancy that is proportional to energy difference. difference. And then, and then you, you, you can start to think having such hardware provided by, uh, uh, by companies, semiconductor companies, you, 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 can, you can start to think what to do uh, to implement logic. And then there is very simple high school intuition. If, if, if you have learned about charge balls, you know that the charge balls, uh, there is, a, there is a repulsive, repulsive interaction between charge balls of the same uh, sign. So basically you can, uh, you, you can implement inverter. So if you put one charge ball in one box and another charge ball in another box, they will try to separate on maximum distance due to uh, Coulomb force uh, repulsion. So in that way, that way you, you can get an inverter. You can also get a controllable inverter if you have two charge balls into boxes, and then there's a third box where it's controlling um, bit or qubit. So this scheme is very good because it is, this is a good scheme for a both classical and quantum uh, inverter, as well as, uh, as classical and quantum C node gate. So obviously we will be more interested in, 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 in a, uh, let's say, in a quantum case, so in quantum case, you, you, you will see that this will be simply distributed in a more continuous way. So, so this will not be so much localized as it, it is shown here. So that's kind of intuition that we have, but still it's good to start with a classical picture for first type of uh, analysis. All right. So th this is how this institution works with uh, uh, semiconductor single electron devices. So, uh, and then uh, I, right now, I, the, the, the one of the concept of, 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 of my company that is also described at, 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 uh, at, at European Consortium uh, is, is about the ability to combine two existing technologies in cryogenic conditions. So right now, probably everybody has heard about uh, Google uh, uh, achievements in, in quantum computation or IBM quantum experience. So, so, so they are using Josephson junctions. So I will mention very briefly on that type of system. So what's Josephson junction? So essentially it's a superconductor. So superconductor 
you you can say this is material that uh, that can uh, carry current with no resistance this happens as, uh, for some materials at very low temperatures so virtually there is no resistance and there is current flow so ohm law is not fulfilled you have london law that is uh, taking place and then uh, so you have superconductor in radio superconductor such such kind of mesoscopic structure so it's possible for a Cooper pair that are electrons with spin up and spin down. So there are two electrons, two fermions create a quasi boson so they can tunnel. And then uh, there is very characteristic IV characteristic uh, observed for such type of system. So it's, it's, it's shown here. And also you can have a, instead of tunneling barrier, you can have a narrowing and you have slightly different IV characteristics. So both type of Josephson junctions are, are used in quantum information processing Nevertheless, the, the, the topper one is, is more popular. So then uh, I, I, can't, I will not describe details of this uh, superconducting te quantum technologies since it's very vast field, but I just give you a, a flavor. So then uh, the next step w uh, was, uh, so what we know, maybe I, I will briefly mention something more. So the size of Cooper pairs is, is quite big. So it's usually Cooper pairs uh, in aluminum it has like size of 3000 angstroms pretty much uh, so this is like 300 nanometers so 300 nanometers is very big size so the just junction cannot be downscaled more because in such case the cooper pairs will not exist and the superconductivity feature will be lost so 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 imagine 300 nanometers at least so in comparison with three nanometers so that's like two orders of magnitude difference so this means that there is potential superiority uh, that can be placed on direct to semiconductors nevertheless semiconductors are much more noisy so so we don't know which, which technology will win finally so instead of of thinking which technology win I, I i i i have a scheme for combining two technologies and to exploit their best benefit so the idea is to build an uh, interface between uh, uh, superconducting quantum chip and semiconductor quantum chip. This is in my Kroganik's paper that's already published. So, so we have the superconductor insulator superconductors. So we have a Josephson junction uh, on, on the top picture. And on the bottom picture, we have a system of two coupled quantum semiconductor quantum dots. So imagine if you inject electron to one of the quantum dots, it will, it will oscillate back and forth uh, so in such way, in such way, the, the moving electron will generate time-dependent electric and magnetic field that will uh, make a phase imprint on the Josephson junction. So here, this middle region is has smaller magnitude for superconducting order per meter. So it will be able to kind of catch electron presence. So it's, it's a very sensitive kind of interaction. They, they also managed to prove existence of topological effects in such structure, which is also good because that's another possibility for encoding quantum information. So, th so this is a scheme for, a co for com combined ar architecture, semiconductor superconducting quantum computer architecture that needs to be exploited. All right, so, so what are possibilities we have? So we have various possibilities of defining graphs in, in the case of coupled semiconductor quantum dots. It's also a good feature that can be used for certain implementation of, of, of some classical and quantum algorithms. So here is the picture how, uh, how this thing looks from the point of view of, of CMOS technology. Um, so we have a, a two qubits that interact in an electrostatic uh, way. So one electron is injected to, to here and another electron is here. So they will oscillate back and, back and forth. And due to the existence of this um, electrostatic interaction, that, uh, that will be also emergence of, of quantum entanglement. This was already proven in one of my papers. So, so uh, and then, uh, and this entanglement is a feature that we, we are exploiting in a quantum computation. Okay, then, uh, then let, let me move to more advanced concept. So more advanced concept is, uh, is a quantum neural network. So uh, on the chain of coupled quantum dots. So we have a, so we have a red R semiconductor areas. So, so, so like quantum dots. So we can inject three electrons at the same time. And then on the, with gray color, there, there are gates, volt, uh, 
we apply some some voltage to these gates. So 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 in such case, like free electrons that are not entangled at the same at the beginning, via interactions as it starts to be entangled. So at the detector, we can have a mixture of 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 of, of few electron states. So 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 it depends how we how we learn this neural network and how we functionalize its behavior, we can make certain use of it. So one of the use of it could be, could be for example, a quantum sensing. Uh, another usage could be quantum algorithms. So it's still open issue how we can uh, use it. So, so my philosophy is from hardware to software, not reversely. That, that's, that, that's, that, that's philosophy also of my company. So, so, so you can. It's it's basically the the, the system described here, is is uh, is referring to to transport of n bodies on some, on some constraints uh, 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 via certain nanostructure. All right. So then, uh, uh, very briefly, the idea uh, I will give the idea of of non-invasive detector. So essentially, uh, what will happen if we have a passage of charge? charge ball close to uh, a, CM a CMOS transistor where we have a only single electron injected to a, to a source of drain. So obviously the, the, the potential will be changed for a short, short time. So there will be some phase imprint and a change of occupancy of eigenenergy levels. So I already proposed the construction of non-invasive detector of charged particles that can be used in CERN or in other places. That, so that's, that's also a new possibility that comes with a single electron device. So here the, 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 the potential benefits can be very broad. So, so, uh, so we, we can make uh, various combination of, of uh, hybrid electronics. So I don't have much uh, time to go into details. So, so, but, but definitely we, 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 can, we, we can deal with that in greater detail. So, so we, we should pay special attention to already existing architectures of a superconducting uh, qubit. There are four possible, there are four architectures, but right now the, 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 the dominating is, is a transmon qubit. So, so basically we have, a, 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 let's say D-Wave company is, is using the flux qubit. That's, that's this one. So this will be later used in the idea of superconducting uh, uh, classical uh, quantum mind, which I'm going to describe. Uh, there is also, so you have two types of flux qubits that are given here. So you have a closed superconductor, there is Josephson junction, there is external coil. And this external coil is, is introducing magnetic field uh, whose flux is, is quantized. So this flux can penetrate the interior of this mm, structure. So in such a way, you can control the quantum state. Uh, another possibility is to use a, 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 a small superconducting island insulator and bigger superconducting island and place a charge a metallic, metallic part. So, so you, can, you, you can control the number of Cooper pairs in small uh, superconducting islands. So this so-called Cooper pair box. This is very analogical to a single electron device in semiconductor. And uh, the last uh, controlling, uh, mm, controlling uh, quant the last architecture is, is sending certain current via Josephson junction. In such case, you, you generate the effective potential and there are certain, uh, the so-called so washboard potential. I'm not going to describe it in detail. So you can control the, 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 the differences between eigenenergies in, in such system. So this is nonlinear system. So it's like a um, harmonic oscillator, basically. So, so there are three, three uh, basic architectures plus four. This is transmon, which is currently used. So transmon by, by in most uh, in ma majority of solutions. So transmon is a combination of Cooper pair box and magnetic flux, but I'm not going to describe it today. All right. So this was the description of of, of super, superconducting qubit that is currently dominating in quantum technologies. And now there is uh, there is a sh sh short brief on 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 classical superconducting electronics that is almost unknown uh, publicly. So this is so instead of using electrons, you can use a flux of, of quantized magnetic field. 
So if you have a superconducting loop, then if you enter such system to a magnetic field, the the, the are on the magnetic flux in such in such uh, loop is quantized, and then you can make use of it. So if you if you put some voltage to a Josephson junction, you can weaken this area. This magnetic flux will go away. So it turns out you can push this magnetic flux very easily. And then you, during this, you, you are generating characteristic peaks. I'm not going to describe it in detail. And then uh, you can push those peaks and make logical operations. And uh, and uh, and then it, it is very it is. 10 to the power four, 10,000 to 1 million times energy for favorable in comparison with a CMOS technology. So you can define uh, OR gate uh, and many other. So basically, there was a, a, a defined pre built processor, a classical processor in superconductor that was working like at four Kelvin that could has a clock of gigahertz range. And it was using only one milliwatt of power, not that's that's quite remarkable. So this technology is still developing. So this is classical superconducting electronics. It also can function in temperatures lower than for Kelvin, because like you need to know that superconducting qubits are functioning in temperature of 10 milli Kelvin. So you can you can join both of them. But before doing so, I want to say that you can define a neural network in uh, in uh, Josephson junctions, like spiking neural network. I'm not going to describe this in detail. This is very quickly operating in giga and terahertz range, and uh, and so uh, so you, so having classical neural networks in superconductor, you can represent classical mind in superconductor, and then you can combine this classical chip with a quantum chip. That's why I call it classical quantum superconducting mind. So this is the way to do it. So you have uh, rapid single quantum flux electronics on the lower part of the picture. On the, on the top, you have a, a, a superconducting Josephson junction qubit, which I already described very brief, briefly before. So, so they, can be, uh, they, can, they can interact via magnetic flux. All right, so, so, so and this is how the system looks at at low uh, uh, from experimental point of view. So unfortunately, you have to keep everything at very low temperatures, like 10 milli Kelvin. You need to use like Oxford dilution refrigerator or other company dilution refrigerator. And then, uh, then there is a certain uh, measurement equipment. But so the solution proposed by me is pretty much uh, that everything's supposed to be in the same in, uh, cryogenic environment. So just to make a, a kind of summary, so uh, so it's okay. So I already described the hybrid uh, classical quantum mind in superconductor. Uh, it's not difficult to uh, interface semiconductor quantum dots with classical CMOS. That's pretty much the same technology. So you can have a predefined. A classical a quantum semiconductor mind in a way. And also, I also described before semiconductor superconductor quantum computer scheme that needs to be developed further. Okay, so there are a bunch of references. I'm not going to go into detail. It's like 10 or 15 of my publications on archive on the, the topic. Let's say I also want to advertise the coming, comfort, uh, the, the coming um, special issue in MDPI journal, that is uh, quantum reports. This is on semiconductor and superconducting quantum devices. The deadline for paper submission is uh, till end of January 2022. So you are invited to, to send your paper. And also there's coming conference that is also, uh, this also is free and online. It's from 11th to 14th November uh, this year. So, so it's coming very soon. So you, you can register, you can give your talk or you can listen and to, to, or to talks that will be given. And also you can, you can publish paper related to this conference also in this MDPI journal. So everybody's welcome and maybe probably I should take some questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris, uh, for your um, great talk. I, I think that for many of us, this was a bit, uh, um, hard, but uh, I also think that this uh, 
information needed to be spread. So, uh, of course, I'm totally side with you about the fact that computation is part of physics. So it's a physical process. Um, we have a question from um, from uh, Xi'an University, and it is very general one. It is a uh, can you tell us the relation between a quantum based cognition and classical cognition for the understanding of a human brain? All right, so nice question. <laughs> but, uh, it's almost understand. like question what's the difference between classical dream and quantum dream. And uh, so, so there was a, a fear of, of, of Schrodinger that there is a, a both Einstein condensate in uh, inside neurons. Um, there are still some speculations because if if there this condensate does exist at room temperature, there is a possibility for non-local correlations and for, for this kind of non-local realism in a way. So I would say I would say I would say in that way. Um, so first of all, it's, it's very remarkable to, to notice that in quantum mechanics, the chaos is suppressed. Chaos is suppressed because everything is fused already. So, so the uh, deterministic chaos is very pronounced in classical physics. And so one change of parameter can change very, can have very drastic effects. Such things is not occurring so often or so strongly in quantum mechanics. That's, so that's one thing. I would say, I would say, quantum perception probably. Uh, so, so I, I'm now constructing quantum agents, and 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 I try to incorporate them the quantum neural networks and so on, so on. So I, I believe the quantum cognition will be richer because the the input of neural network. Uh, quantum neural network, you can also detect the entanglement between or non-local correlation between two states that is not so that is not doable in, in classical physics. So, so, so quantum correlation would be, uh, so quantum cognition would be kind of richer. Nevertheless, you should remember that uh, quantum state is very fragile. So, so I believe there will be in, in enhancement Connected with uh, with um, the quantumness of things, but I also believe that this enhancement will be not so dramatic. So that's first thing. Second thing is, can we really exploit short algorithm? And here, this is very questionable uh, thing because because of course theoreticians always will tell you yes, 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 but I'm a little bit person in between, and I believe that. It is, it is almost very difficult or impossible to implement short algorithm on greater scale. So, so in a sense, I believe in a quantum technologies, but I believe in them from the point of view that they bring some enhancement. So, 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 so probably that's this type of answer I, I, I can give it to you. So uh, I have no clue. I have also tried to, to see things on, related to quantum artificial life and see how the quantum ants would behave and which features extracts they can have. So perhaps perhaps in, in six or one year time, I will be able to, to give you more detailed answer. So is there any uh, more question? <laughs> no, I don't see. Other uh, questions? I don't know if uh, in Xi'an they are happy with your uh, answer or if they, they wanted to go further in, on this actually very deep issue. Uh, I have a... Um... Okay, they are happy. Uh, I, I have a, a really uh, layman uh, question for you. So, May you tell us uh, the difference uh, from uh, a parallel computer and a quantum computer? So, because you may see a quantum computer and a massive uh, parallel computer. Of course, uh, uh, what's the difference? 
so, so, so if you have n qubits that are entangled, then the increase of a com computation efficiency from quantum algorithmic point of view is e to the power n. And, uh, and such things, uh, so, so basically you need, you, you, you need to, to analyze deutsch yossa algorithm to, uh, uh, to understand this difference. So, 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 so sometimes you, you, you only need to, to do one operation instead of n times uh, using, uh, using quantum computer. So, so there is certain speed up because if you don't make measurement, the parallelism happens at its, its inherent feature, the, the, the parallelism of processes. So, so, so in that sense, so in that sense, uh, the, the quantum Turing machine is, is more powerful. It can simulate classical Turing machine and not reversely. So, 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 so that's one thing. And second thing, I would say the quantum computer is very effective in simulating nanosystems. So it can assist in, uh, in, in, in new, uh, new drugs uh, that are designed. It can assist in, uh, uh, in, in de further development of nanotechnologies and so on. So, so as, especially if you have more than 10 qubits, interacting qubits, such problem is not solvable from theoretical point of view. So, 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 so you can get a quite immediate answer just by measurement of, of output of a quantum computation. So that's, that's, that's the advantage. And, um, okay. Uh, of course I have many questions, but it's also, uh, we are actually already, we already extended the, uh, our time. A, a last, uh, very last question again, uh, probably like the first one that you received from, from Xian. So can you imagine a way that we can uh, check experimentally what uh, Roger Penrose was uh, actually saying many years ago that actually the, the, our brain is a quantum computer, actually an highly paralyzed the quantum computer. So, so this is this is actually a little bit in direction of your today's lecture. So, if we are able to create classical quantum mind in superconductor or in semiconductor, you, you can you can try to, to to see its performers. It's for you can so so you have ability to incorporate the spiking neural networks in Josephson junctions. This is a very remarkable feature. So you can you have also spiking neural net networks in brain. So in principle, you can try to build similar type of, of, of mind and see and see the comparison in performance from hardware point of view. At least in theory, it's possible. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that, that's why I, I, I'm advocating this project on a classical quantum superconductor, uh, superconducting mind, right? Or classical quantum semiconductor mind, right? Okay, thank you. I, I think uh, you were all inspired. Uh, by this talk, and uh, I, I thank uh, again Chris for uh, for giving it, uh, and, and also for doing this effort to condensate all the things that we don't know about quantum mechanics and quantum computing in less than an hour, which is remarkable by itself. And so, uh, thank you for for joining, and see you next week. See you all next week. Yes. Yeah, so. Bye. It was great pleasure. Thank you for, for possibility of giving the presentation. Thank you. Thank you.